Hello and welcome. This is Science Visualized. Today we're looking at the E1 reaction mechanism. In both E1 and E2 elimination mechanism, you end up with an alkene as a product. So the alkene that has carbon-carbon double bond. So you end up losing the living group and then you get a double bond. Both E1 and E2 will use a base and that base will abstract this proton resulting in elimination. Let's look at the mechanism, E1 mechanism. Step one, this step is very similar to what we saw for SN1 mechanism, because the first step is the formation of the carbocation intermediate. And how does that happen? The first thing that happens is that you end up losing the living group, which is the halogen. In this case, it's bromine, but it could also be fluorine, chlorine, iodine or activated alcohol. So if you have an alcohol and you convert it to a tosylate, OTS, or a mesylate, or MS, for example, then it makes them a very good living group. And because this is the most important step, the loss of the living group is the red determining step. So because of that, you end up forming a carbocation. So with that carbon, they are having a positive charge. The rate of formation of carbocation for alkyl halide is tertiary alkyl halides are much faster, followed by secondary, which is followed by primary and then by methyl, methyl alkyl halide. I'll just say methyl X. As mentioned before, the carbocation is sp2 hybridized, that means it's flat or planar, and because of that, for E1 elimination, it really doesn't matter what the stereochemistry of this hydrogen is. See, the positive charge is on this carbon, then the hydrogen is on this other carbon. So it doesn't matter what the stereochemistry is. What will end up happening is that you have a base which either has a minus charge or electron pair, and then it will use that to abstract a proton. Remember, the base is a Lewis base. So that means it donates electron pair, and then that hydrogen is a proton, so it accepts electron pair. In other words, the hydrogen connects to the base, but it loses its electrons. The electrons that were formed, used for bonding between carbon and hydrogen, will flow back to form a double bond, and therefore you end up with a double bond at that position. And that becomes the elimination product. We use what's called Zaitsev's rule, where the most substituted alkene is favored. So the most substituted is tetra substituted, tetra substituted, and then that's more favored than tri substituted, which is more favored than di substituted, which is more favored than mono substituted, and then that's much more favored or stable than just an alkene without any substitution. Let me quickly show the example of a tetra substituted alkene will be an alkene that has R, four R groups around the double bond, four alkyl groups. Tri-substituted, on the other hand, has three alkyl groups. The other one, you can leave it empty, or we can show it has hydrogen. Di-substituted has two R groups. You could have the R groups on the same side, so that's a cis alkene. Or you could have the R groups on either side, that gives you a transalkene. Or you could have the R groups on the same side. The most stable of this is the trans, and then followed by the cis. Germinal will be the least stable. And then next, monosubstituted alkene has only one R group. And then lastly, you have the basic alkene that has only two carbons. Friends, if you enjoyed this presentation, please consider supporting this channel by subscribing. Thank you.